वेलकम टू टुडे सेशन डियर लर्नर्स आई एम डॉक्टर सुबोध प्रसाद आई एम वर्किंग इन द कैपेसिटी ऑफ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इन द गोविंद बल्लभ पंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पंत नगर उत्तराखंड सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन टुडे सेशन टुडे सेशन इज अबाउट द जे डी बी सी आर्किटेक्चर एज आई टोल्ड यू इन द लास्ट सेशन दैट जे बी जे डी बी सी आर्किटेक्चर विल हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ जे डी बी सी कनेक्शन इज डन इन अ बेटर वे so the learning objectives of today are understanding the jdbc architecture and then the and after that how this jdbc architecture will help you in the driver connection then we will see about jdbc usage and let us understand the architecture of jdbc so first of all we will see that in the starting in this particular diagram you can see the application is there this application is the java servlet or the applet or any other kind of application that is being used by any user or it can be used by any developer so in for for running this particular application we will be requiring this jdbc api an api will be required of jdbc and this api will be helped with the 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 jdbc driver manager so this driver manager of jdbc will help the api of jdbc now this jdbc driver manager will be helped by the three things that is the sql server then the data source and the oracle and the using in the all these three things we will be using what these are we will be the jdbc drivers how will be using the jdbc driver that we will see in the coming slides moving ahead we will see the description the description of the application it is the java applet or a servlet that communicates with the data source the so if we have a data source from where the data is coming or we have to so, uh, save the data so that is our data source and the java applet or a servlet will be communicating with this particular data source so the jdbc api the jdbc api will allow the java programs to execute the sql statements and the retrieve the result so whatever the sql statements are being executed the results will be retrieved with the help of this jdbc api itself so some of the important classes and the interfaces are there which are defined in the jdbc api so uh, this api of this jdbc in this they are particularly defined so these are these following the number one is the driver manager as shown in the diagram it plays an important role in the jdbc architecture because it uses some database specific drivers to effectively connect the enterprise applications to databases because we have to connect the enterprise application and in the enterprises we are using in the enterprises like big companies like airtel and the uh, this jio and this intel and like many various organizations which are using this connection of java virtual machine with the using this um, java connections they are using the jdbc architecture so because they are using the enterprise applications and therefore they are able to connect with the jdbc using this technique only so this is a very crucial thing you have to understand whenever you are going to industry you are going to any enterprise this will be of very helpful to you after this you can see this jdbc drivers to communicate with the data source through jdbc you need a jdbc driver that intelligently communicates with the respective data source so we have to connect also and we have to connect intelligently also which will help the communication with the respective data source right so moving ahead what we can see is the jdbc drivers jdbc drivers are client side adapters which are installed on the client machines they are not on the server this is the first and foremost thing because they are not on the server they will be installed on the client machines then you can see that these drivers will help client side adaptering from your system directly to the server that will convert the request from java programs you to a protocol that the dbms can understand there are four types of jdbc drivers these four types of jdbc drivers are there type 1 driver or jdbc odbc 
bridge driver this we had also used used in the example of the last session in the last session when we talked about the jdbc connections in that example last example we had also used this jdbc odbc bridge driver so the type 2 driver or the native api driver this again we will use in certain examples then type 3 drivers or the network protocol driver then the final type 4 driver or the thin driver is there so these jdbc drivers now we will see jdbc drivers or java database connectivity drivers is an important an api that provides a standard way of accessing relations relational databases from java applications right to interact with a database using the jdbc a java application needs to use a jdbc driver there are four types of jdbc drivers available each with their own advantages and the disadvantages so the type 1 jdbc odbc bridge driver <coughs> it is a bridge like, like like i told you in the last example we have seen that between the jdbc and odbc so <coughs> this odbc you have seen uh, many times so this stands for open database connectivity so it uses the odbc drivers to connect to a database and then then translate the jdbc calls to the corresponding odbc calls so this driver is suitable for applications that need to access the non java databases as it follows the java applications to use the odbc drivers available on the system however the performance of this driver can be slow as it adds an extra layer of translation so like it is explained in this particular uh, example what is jdbc odbc in this the jdbc calls are converted to the odbc calls so odbc stands for open database connectivity so when the, when we are translating between various devices sometimes there is java sometimes there is not java so because sometimes java sometimes not java is there so this odbc will help you translation between the java machine and the non java machine and therefore because if there is an extra layer of translation then it means it will be a bit slow and the performance of this driver will be not that fast at as compared to only jdbc and then the type 2 java jdbc drivers the type 2 native api partly java driver the type 2 driver uses a vendor specific api to connect to a database and the api is implemented in the <coughs> native code itself this driver is partly written in java and partly in the native code it provides better performance than the type 1 driver as it does not need to translate jdbc calls to odbc calls however it is still not as portable as the type 4 driver still we are using suppose you are using certain programming language some other programming language and you want to communicate to jdbc or the vendor specific api then you will use this type 2 kind of java driver which is called the partly java driver here the speed will be faster than the type 1 because in the type 2 you are not having the translation layer but still some of the native calls will be there in the native code so therefore the speed will be faster than type 1 but not too fast now moving ahead the next type of jdbc driver will be the type 3 driver this type 3 driver jdbc type 3 driver is the network protocol driver the type 3 driver is a pure java driver that uses a middleware server to connect to a database this middleware server is that kind of a server which translate the jdbc calls into the vendor specific protocol which is used by the database this driver is highly portable as it is implemented entirely in java but it can suffer from performance issues due to the extra overhead of using a middleware server again there is a middleware server which is translating the jdbc calls into the vendor specific protocol so suppose the vendor is using some specific protocols the different kinds of uh, layers are there so this although this is a very highly portable um, jdbc driver network protocol driver but still sometimes the performance can still suffer because of this overhead of using the middleware because the middleware server will be translating the jdbc calls so a middleware server has to have has to have their 
in order so we can use this network protocol driver right in this jdbc driver the fourth and the final kind of protocol driver the type 4 driver is also known as a thin driver as it is a pure java driver because only java will communicate here that that, that communicate directly with the uh, database server using a vendor specific protocol we are using a vendor specific protocol and all the calls will be written in the java itself it does not require any middleware it does not require any native code it is making it highly portable and efficient so we are whatever we are coding we must keep in mind we are coding in java only and our code is highly portable and it is made in the native code itself and therefore we will be more efficient in using it so it is most commonly used jdbc driver now you understand why this type 4 kind of driver or no also known as the thin driver is the most commonly used jdbc driver as it will provide the best performance and will be suitable for most of the database application because of a seemingly very very fast speed there is no translation no middle layer there is no overhead in it no mid no middle server will be there right so no overheads no overcharges nothing is there so the speed is exceptionally fast therefore jdbc driver whenever we are using the native language in that native language itself we will be using the jdbc driver type 4 that is the thin driver right so in summary each type of jdbc driver has its own advantage and disadvantages and the choice of the driver will be depending on the specific requirements of the application suppose you are coding in a particular application or you are coding for a specific specifically uh, uh, an environment for that environment you will have to first of all if you see how you are making this software analysis you are doing the software uh, software need analysis you are seeing how you are going to make the software in that particular software you will see you will be using the jdbc driver then you will have to select from all these four kinds of driver you will have to select any one kind of driver which will be most of the suitable for you because the most suitable will be depending upon which type of code you are writing what are the application that you are catering for what are the environment for which you are coding for non java databases the type 1 driver may be the only option while for most of the compatible java java database databases applications the type 4 driver is the most appropriate choice because as we have already discussed it is most fast but suppose if the communicating two applications one is of java and one is not of java then we will be using the type 1 driver because it is the only option that we are having right because the type 1 will do what it will then make an open database connection from the jdbc to odbc and therefore the data will still get communicated although both the machines will not be of java compatibility but still our purpose can be solved in this so moving ahead we can see the types of jdbc architectures so there are two kinds of JDBC architectures, two tier and three tier. The JDBC architectures consist of these two times, kinds of two tier and three tier processing models to access a database. They are described below. Like you will see, a two tier model is a Java application communicates directly to the data sources. The JDBC driver enables the communication between the application and the data source. When a user sends a query to the data source, the answers for those queries are sent back to the user in the form of results. So this is a two-tier model in which the user makes a query and the answers are then sent back to the user in the form of results. This is the two-tier model. In the two-tier model, the data source can be located on a different machine or a network to which a user is connected. This is known as the client-server configuration where the user's machine acts as the client and the machine has a data source running acts as the server. So there are two machines, one has the client, one is the server. The client will ask for certain kind of query will be sent and it will be sent to the server and the server will reply and will give the result to that query and it will be sent to the network or the machine on the network or whatever kind we are, we will code it, right? So the second kind of JDBC architecture is the three tier architecture. So this three tier model in this, the user's queries are sent to the middle tier services. They are not directly sent to the server itself. They are, they are sent to the middle tier services from which the commands are again sent to the data source. Now from here the commands will be sent to the data source. 
so the results are sent back to the middle tier and from there to the user so in this the user is not directly communicating with what the user is not directly communicating with the server it will be communicating with the middle tier services so there are two when we are making a two way communication so uh, a user is sending the request to the server but it will not reach the server directly it will go to the middle tier services and this middle tier services will then send this request forward to the data source or the data server and then the server will send the result of the query in the form of results to not directly to the user but to the middle tier services and the user will get will then get this result from the middle tier services to the user so this kind of model is found very useful whenever we are talking about the management information systems or which is mis systems for directors now what is a management information system a management information system is a kind of system in which not each and every kind of roles assigned to the user will get to see all the results suppose you are enrolled in uttarakhand open university open distance learning platform so your management information system the mis that you are using you will be logging in as a student and the person who is the evaluator who will check your copies will log in as an evaluator and you are the learner they are the evaluator and there is some third party suppose your vice chancellor or dean will log in they will log in with their module so each and every will will log in not, not directly to the database they will get the results they will log in to the middle tier services and this middle tier services will help them getting the result from the server by running various different kinds of queries this will help in conserving the data consistency this will help in conserving the the data because all the data cannot be shown to everyone whatever your evaluator is get giving the marks it cannot be shown to all the students if one student is getting a marks only that student will see the marks right so dear learners i thank you so very much for your time and patience i hope you have understood this jdbc and this jdbc architecture thank you so very much mm -hmm.